Hello, Frank Shines and Umar Qureshi here again with Analytics AI ML. How are you doing today, Umar? Hey, I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Hey, great. Hey, yeah, let's jump right into this SIPOC. We've been talking about this quite a bit in the past. Uh, you and I have used this for this tool uh, with a lot of different types of customers. And I, of all the Lean Six Sigma tools, this is one of my favorites, Umar. So let's, uh, let me just kind of walk the group through this. Today, we're going to talk about SIPOC. Now, when I was growing up playing sports, um, we had bad coffee in America at the time, and I never drank coffee. Then I moved to Brazil, lived in Brazil, and for the first time tasted what really great coffee is like, and I fell in love with great Brazilian coffee. So uh, we did a little quick Google search. We found out that one of the highest search terms on Google Trends is for coffee. So we thought this would be a good example to use. We're looking at the SIPOC for making a cup of coffee. Now, when we develop a SIPOC and understand that a SIPOC is a method, it's a tool for Lean Six Sigma. It's one of my favorites again. And it's a way of understanding all the components in a system around your process that help you identify what's going on. Um, you can use it to look at an entire industry. You can use it to look at the healthcare industry, the healthcare market. You can use it to look at education, democracy. You can use it uh, for music or sports. Um, in this particular case, we're gonna use it for a business that's in the, in, the, um, in the business of creating copy. So the first thing that happens is when we draft a SIPOC, we start not with suppliers and inputs and process and outputs and customers going from left to right. We actually are starting in the middle at process. And the reason is because everything builds upon your process. So the process in this particular case, we say, is a, uh, we got a cafe. Uh, we're making coffee. A customer comes in. They request uh, their cup of coffee. So we receive a customer request. We then select the coffee based upon what the request is. We pour the coffee into the filter. We place that filter into the brewer. Then we pour the water into uh, the brewer and brew the coffee until it's ready. Once the coffee is ready, we pour the coffee into the cup and serve it to the customer and collect payment from the customer. So those are the high level process steps from one through eight in the middle of this chart. Then for each of the processes, we need to understand what are the inputs and who supplies that input to us. So in this particular case, if we receive a customer request, then that coffee request must come from a supplier. In this particular case, you can have a customer that's your supplier and you can have a supplier that's your customer. So we receive that from the actual coffee uh, drinker or coffee payer, the customer. We get the request, we receive that customer request, and then that request is converted into ultimately an output to the customer. In this particular case, it's a quality cup of coffee for the coffee drinker and for the coffee payer. Sometimes I take my daughter or my wife out for coffee and I don't want coffee that day, but I'm going to pay, pay the bill, right? So I pay for the coffee. So it's possible that you have multiple customers, the payer of the coffee and the drinker of the coffee. Uh, for the payer, the output of value to the payer is an affordable price that I'm going to pay. And the output to the coffee drinker customer is a quality cup of coffee. And a quality cup of coffee, obviously, we need to think about what we call the critical, the quality metrics. You know, what are those things that are important to the customer? Maybe it's um, fresh coffee, um, a hot cup of coffee, high quality coffee that's not too weak, not too strong, whatever it might be. So we'll have to define quality um, at a later point. Part of quality may also be timely delivery, so it doesn't take too long to receive their coffee. We then repeat that for all of the other suppliers and inputs to our process. So the coffee, we look back and we say the input for the coffee comes from these different suppliers, Folgers, Keurig, Melita, Starbucks, uh, Brazilian Santos, whatever uh, the different coffee suppliers are. Then we look at the filter. Where do we get the filter from? Well, the filter is an input and it must come from a supplier. Maybe we've got Melita, a bun, um, or Cuisinart. In the case of water, there are different ways that we could receive the water. Maybe we're taking it directly from the tap, directly from the faucet, or perhaps it's filtered water. In some cases, we may be looking at bottled water that comes from Osani or Avion or Aquafina. And then as we move down our process, uh, we brew the coffee until it's ready. That means we have to have an actual coffee brewer, which comes from Mr. Coffee, Lavazza, or Keurig, for example. Uh, for example. We pour the coffee into the cup, which means we have to have a cup. 
In this particular case, let's say it's a paper coffee cup that comes from New Line or Perfect Touch or Starbucks or some of the other suppliers. And then we collect payment. And the payment is received as an input from the payer customer, right? And in exchange for that payment, this customer may want a receipt for his bill or her bill. Or if they pay you with $10 um, and the cup of coffee um, only costs $2, then you have to give them change of an additional $8. So this is an example of how we look at a SIPOC um, for the process of making a cup of coffee. But understand, a SIPOC is not a process map. It's a high level understanding of all the systems and components surrounding your process from suppliers to inputs uh, to your process that you convert into an output to a specific customer for the value they would like to receive. This has been Frank Shines and Umar Qureshi with Analytics AIML. Thank you.